The work of Dr. John Calhoun at the National Institute of Health in Washington, D.C. has attempted to answer this question. In a unique experiment that took years to complete, Dr. Calhoun used white mice to study population growth and its effects on individual behavior. In addition to his renowned research papers, he has recorded some of these observations on film. In this 16-cell mouse habitat, utopian conditions of nutrition, comfort, and housing were provided for a potential population of over 3,000 mice. Yet, in spite of ideal conditions, the mouse population met with catastrophe. Individuals were kept track of by color markings on their fur. Factors which normally control population growth, such as predation by owls or cats, were eliminated. Transmissible disease was also reduced. In effect, the mouse universe simulated the present situation of a continually expanding population of humans. To see how Dr. Calhoun's mouse universe grew, we'll use the familiar population graph again. Within the first 100 days, the mice went through the period Dr. Calhoun called strive. This was a period of adjustment. Territories were established and nests were made. The next period lasted about 250 days. The population of the mice doubled every 60 days. This was called the exploit period. The use of resources became unequal. Although each living unit was identical in structure and opportunities, more food and water was consumed in some areas. As the population increased, most mice associated eating and drinking with the presence of others, and crowding developed in certain units. The third period, consisting of 300 days, found the population of mice leveling off. This was called the equilibrium period. Dr. Calhoun noticed that the newer generations of young were inhibited, since most space was already socially defined. At this time, some unusual behavior became noticeable. Violence became prevalent. Excess males strived for acceptance, were rejected, and withdrew. Huddling together, they would exhibit brief flurries of violence among themselves. The effects of violence became increasingly visible. Certain individuals became targets of repeated attack. These individuals would have badly chewed and scarred tails. Other young mice growing into adulthood exhibited an even different type of behavior. Dr. Calhoun called these individuals the beautiful ones. Their time was devoted solely to grooming, eating, and sleeping. They never involved themselves with others, engaged in sex, nor would they fight. All appeared as a beautiful exhibit of the species, with keen alert eyes and a healthy, well-kept body. These mice, however, could not cope with unusual stimuli. Though they looked inquisitive, they were, in fact, very stupid. Dr. Calhoun called the last period the die phase, leading the population into extinction. Although the mouse utopia could house 3,000, the population began to decline at 2,200. In the shift from the equilibrium to the die phase, each animal became less aware of associates, despite all animals being pushed closer together. Dr. Calhoun concluded that the mice could not effectively deal with the repeated contact of so many individuals. The evidence of violence increased to the point where most individuals had had their tails bitten to some degree. Eventually, 
the entire mouse population perished. Dr. Calhoun's experiment is a classic example of a typical population and its growth when left unchecked. Research in this area continues under his supervision. Currently, Dr. James Hill has taken the basics of the Calhoun experiment to study social behavior even more closely. In his experiment, rats are used instead of mice. Healthy individuals are selected to start the population. The rats are anesthetized so that Dr. Hill can perform a minor operation necessary to the success of his experiments. A small electromagnetic encapsulated device is implanted into every rat. This small unit enables sensing devices to keep track of the movement and position of each individual in the population. After surgery, the rats are introduced to their new multi-leveled home, all at the same time. The rats immediately begin to explore their new environment prior to organizing territories and nesting. Dr. Hill will trace how individuals move about in crowded situations. This movement is followed by tubular sensing devices. Every time a rat enters or passes through a tube, the unit detects and registers its presence. This constant movement is monitored by computer. Nesting activity is also studied. Dr. Hill has observed that the larger the population, the less care a mother gives to her nest and young. The same type of individuals that resulted in the mouse utopia are also emerging in the rat population. There are aggressives, asocial, and outcasts. Though these studies use animals, the findings about population growth and individual behavior are being closely compared to our own human population. Like all populations that have existed on this planet, many researchers believe that the human race has reached a crucial point in the exploit phase, a point where important decisions must be made and careful planning implemented if we are to survive. The study of plant and animal populations helps us to make decisions about the future of our human population so that we may maintain our own balance with nature.